Now on Coast TV News. Wider roads. Delta proposing changes to a key section of Route 9, but people in the area are torn between safety issues and the impact the project will have on their homes. No assurance of insurance. Mobile homeowners in Ocean City struggling to find coverage. Park proposal. Milford wants your input on a planned 19-acre park. We have details on the open house that will shape community space. This is Coast TV News at 6. Route 9 widening. What the people that live near Route 9 say about this road work. Good evening. I'm Madeline Overturf. And I'm Charlie Sakaitis. Welcome to our News at 6. We begin tonight with plans to expand one of Delaware's busiest beach routes. This is the part of Route 9 that we're talking about. The one mile stretch at the end of Route 9 before it hits Route 1 at five points. Plans to widen 9 come with scrutiny from people who live in that area. Coast TV News reporter Brandon Ferguson joins us live in Lewis. Brandon, Del Dot wants to make those changes right where you are. Yes, Maddie, on this section of Route 9 behind me, Del Dot wants to add two lanes going both ways. Now, I spoke with neighbors in the area about this project, and they have mixed opinions. Old Vine Boulevard on Route 9 to Route 1. That's the area Del Dot is proposing to widen to two lanes each way. Neighbors like Carolyn Vane say something needs to change. I do think they're needed. It's a necessary evil. Um, being this close to nine, we're concerned about how wide it's going to be. People that I spoke to in the neighborhood right up against Route 9 say this grass ditch right here sees multiple accidents. Now this sidewalk I'm walking on right now is the sidewalk that these people use in the neighborhood. And as I walk up to the camera, we are up to the property line of the neighborhood and people that live in this neighborhood say they're concerned about accidents possibly going in their backyard. We already have issues, several, um, there's been numerous accidents, two that have come through our fence, and we just can't take any more congestion. How much are they going to take on each side? And what happens then with additional accidents coming on um, to people's homes? Del Dot says the goal is to improve traffic flow and safety. This project is in the early stages. Del Dot sent this notice out to people in Lewis and Milton about a public workshop. This will take place September 24th at Cape Penelopen High School from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. In Lewis, Brandon Ferguson, Coast TV News. Another project on Route 9 that has been in the works since 2020 is nearby. It involves Plantation Road, Beaver Dam Road, and Route 9. You see it on your screen. A roundabout was built there. More work to change the area is ongoing and it's expected to be finished in the spring of 2025. All this brings us to our Coast TV poll. We want to know what you think about the widening of Route 9. Let's take a look at the updated results from last news hour. Take a look at your screen. You can see 66% say long overdue, 11% say needed now, 15% say it's too little too late, and 8% think it's unnecessary. Now we're going to keep running this poll, but that has been the leader so far this evening. You can go vote right now on coasttv.com or use the Coast TV mobile app. And of course, we'll show updated results on Coast TV News at 11. Tonight, Del Dot will be holding a public meeting to discuss the ways to improve Sussex Drive in Lewis. That's lo located between Savannah Road and the Highland Acres community. Del Dot says its project will develop a concept design to improve conditions for people walking, biking, a better streetscape through landscape, as well as improved traffic flows. One neighbor says the street is difficult just to get in and out of. When you're trying to get out of Sussex Drive, we don't really get a break here because of that staggered flow of traffic. It becomes continuous by the time you reach Sussex Drive. I think they're trying to address that by having another officer at Sussex and Savannah. That meeting is happening right now at Lewis Elementary. No coverage. Mobile homeowners in one Ocean City community, they're bumping into insurance problems. Ocean City Council has gotten a number of complaints from mobile homeowners who can no longer find insurance companies willing to cover their mobile homes. According to the town, insurance companies have been pulling coverage for mobile homes all across the nation, leaving some homeowners 
left behind. I'm still reaching out to different insurance companies, you know, following leads, asking for information from other people, and hopefully somebody will insure me. The Ocean City Council plans on directing these insurance concerns to the General Assembly. The Georgetown Police Department has a new project at hand, but they need public approval. An information session is taking place tonight. A new building would update Georgetown's current police station and public works station. The project would cost up to $18 million. Police say it would give officers and staff a much better building to operate out of. Chief of Police Ralph Holmes says he's optimistic that the public will be on board. I think that uh, overwhelmingly I've heard positive remarks from the community about that we absolutely need a new building. I think that will uh, be a positive reinforcement to the type of services they're, they're going to receive. The meeting tonight discusses the budget plans and how they would move forward. The next meeting is a week from today. Let's go ahead and take a live look right now outside into Ocean City as we join our first alert chief meteorologist Paul Williams with a look at our forecast. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Maddie, and we're going to stay with that view in Ocean City right now. We're riding at about 73 degrees with the winds coming at about eight miles per hour out of the east northeast, staying relatively light and just comfortable. Now we will see increasing cloud cover as we progress throughout the night, and we actually are concerned with the possibility of fog throughout the late night, early morning hours. Moisture content is going to go up just a little bit. We are currently at 73 degrees in Milton as well as Millsboro, Ocean Pines and Ocean City. One degree cooler than that in Rehoboth Indian River Inlet as well as Bethany Beach. We're at 76 degrees currently in Seaford. Taking a look on our live radar, we're staying clear. We're seeing a few clouds trying to you know, just kind of whisper its way or whisk its way or move its way from the south to the north, but it's falling upon some pockets of drier air, so the cloud cover is not really manifesting as of yet. But we are concerned about the cloud on the ground. That's a technical way of saying fog. We'll talk about that in the possibly rain next week, but for right now, back to you, Charlie. Thank you. Paul? Fallout continues for the Lewis Fire Department after a racial slur was apparently uttered on radio broadcast by a volunteer firefighter. Late this afternoon, fire department officials confirmed that they concluded their internal investigation. The department says the man was put on 30-day suspension, removed from office, and is required to take diversity training. Lewis Mayer says that the city acknowledges the severity of the incident and will work with the Lewis Fire Department to address the issue. In Milford, a meeting tonight will help determine the future of a new park in the city. The park, referred to Deep Branch Park, is on 19.4 acres of land you see here off South Rehoboth Boulevard. It is outlined in this specific section on the map, and the park may look something like Memorial Park with pickleball and basketball courts. Brad Dennehy says it's mostly up to locals and their suggestions at the open house tonight. We're proposing various things from walking trails to playgrounds, pickleball courts, but uh, again, it's really what the community and what the public wants to see. Before a park can be built, Dennehy says a parking lot and path to the property will need to be established. Now, originally the city wanted to build a path on the property of Annette Billings that was scrapped after a contentious eminent domain battle. In traffic news, that Rehoboth Avenue repaving project, it's been pushed back. It is going to start, however, on October 1st. The first few weeks, they will be focusing on crosswalks and curbing, then milling and paving. Construction will take place from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. every day. Repaving will start at the drawbridge and work west of the traffic circle. Lanes will be closed. Parking will be restricted. Weather permitting, the project will be completed before winter. Throughout the summer, the city of Rehoboth Beach tried to improve traffic flow and safety on King Charles Avenue and recently did a survey. 106 people responded, 39 in person, the rest online. The city says 73% came from locals, 21% from visitors, 4.7% from other. Don't know what that means, but apparently most of the responses agree with the temporary measures and want to see more of them. Governor John Carney announced today that after two breaches north of the Indian River Inlet in the past few months, DelDot and DENREC will work together on an emergency fix. DelDot will add sheets of steel, creating a wall. DENREC will do an emergency sand replenishment project within the next couple of months to protect the beach and Route 1 throughout the winter. Local environmentalists had petitioned state agencies to have a public meeting about the issues at the inlet. That is now happening. 
on Wednesday, September 25th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at Bethany Beach Town Hall. We're just days away from the 2024 Hispanic Festival, a day to celebrate Hispanic culture in our area. Dozens of people are expected to fill in North Ray Street tomorrow in Georgetown. It's going to look very different on Sunday. Attendees will be able to enjoy live artists and food from countries like Mexico, Colombia and El Salvador. In addition, over 100 vendors will be there showing what they have to offer. One of those vendors is Lupton Law, an immigration law firm with an office right here in our area. Oftentimes we'll just do consultations like right there. You know, we tell people if you have questions when you're walking by to get food or something, just come over to us, talk with us, and we'll be happy to help. The doors open at 11 a.m. with a $20 entrance fee. Kids under 11 get in free. And after the event costs are covered, the rest of the money is going to be donated to First State Community Action Agency, the Rosa Health Center, and other organizations. Very important here, Coast TV sister station Telemundo Del Marva will also be at the event, so make sure to stop by their tent and say hello. And we are just getting started this evening. A walk to end Alzheimer's in Rehoboth Beach this weekend. How to join. And right now we take a look at our evening planner. We're looking for a cloud cover to go on the increase and a chance of some late night early morning fog is also in the uh, forecasting cards. But first, a heartwarming rescue leads to a new life for one little dog. We're back in just 60 seconds. There's still lots of great weather left to enjoy a new deck and a vacation. With Paul Davis, you can have both. Our composite decking looks great. It won't fade, curl, or rot. So it's maintenance free and comes with our lifetime warranty. Paul Davis will bring the showroom to you, take measurements, and give you a down to the penny price that same day. And that vacation? We'll give you that too. Pay nothing for 12 months and get a luxury vacation for two. Call today for a free same day estimate. Paul Davis Restoration and Home Remodeling. Feeling the summer sizzle? Is it turning your home into a sauna? At FH Fur, we know you can't wait when your AC is down for the count. That's why we're offering same-day service, guaranteed. If we don't make it to you the very same day, you won't pay a diagnostic or dispatch fee, plain and simple. So whether your AC is blowing hot air, your thermostat is on the fritz, or your entire system needs replacing, an FH Fur expert technician will bring your comfort back today. 877-COFFER-FHFUR.COM Imagine going boating down the Rehoboth Canal, beautiful day, and all of a sudden you see a dog in a tree. Yeah, that was the reality a few weeks ago. And in this week's Coastal Connections, we introduce you to that pup, show you how she's doing today, and what made her rescue extra special. Hi, bubs. Hi. It's okay. A sweet reunion after a tricky rescue. After getting a call from a passing boat, Rehoboth Beach firefighters found and saved the little dog stuck in a tree 10 feet above the Rehoboth Canal. Told her it was all right, try to calm her down and wrap the blanket over so she didn't bite. With no collar or microchip, the little lady was taken to the Brandywine Valley SPCA. She was very dirty, obviously very tired. She slept the first day. Um, and lots of ticks and lots of fleas. After weeks of waiting in case her owner came forward, the SPCA says no one did. But happy news, she was adopted. And not only does she have a new family, she has a new friend in the firefighters who saved her life. Yeah, you remember me. That's why I wear the baseball hat so you could recognize it. A big, beautiful life for a little dog in Sussex County. For Coastal Connections, I'm Madeline Overturf. Coastal Connections is sponsored by Baths by Spicer Brothers. As I get older, I was getting a little off balance. Got the recommendations for Baths by Spicer Brothers. I love my shower. It's, it's perfect for me. My favorite part was probably how quick and easy it was. They came in the morning and they were done by afternoon. I definitely wanted the grab bars. They also put the seat in, which was very nice. The wand is good, especially if you're sitting. So much safer to get in and out of now. It seems like my showers are quicker that way. So it's perfect. For more than a decade, Farsiga has been trusted again and again and again. Farsiga. Ask your doctor about Farsiga. 
when choosing windows and doors for your home, at Pella, it's your choice. We manufacture maintenance-free vinyl, fiberglass, and wood-clad windows and patio doors, all with lifetime warranties. High performance, energy efficient, and loaded with options to help make your house your home. Industry first features and benefits make living easier and increase your home's value. Visit our Experience Center or call us today to schedule your free in-home consultation where we bring the showroom to you. With Chevy trucks, be ready for adventure. With power you can count on. Capability that doesn't compromise. A hard-working EV with more range than any competitor. And the potential to take you anywhere. It's Chevy truck season. Get 1.9% financing, plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. See your Delmarva Chevy dealers. As I get older, I was getting a little off balance. Got the recommendations for baths by Bicer Brothers. I love my shower. It's, it's perfect for me. My favorite part was probably how quick and easy it was. They came in the morning and they were done by afternoon. I definitely wanted the grab bars. They also put the seat in, which was very nice. The wand is good, especially if you're sitting. So much safer to get in and out of now. It seems like my showers are quicker that way. So it's perfect. The Delaware Celebration of Jazz presents Cancer Survivor Night, an evening of music and dance benefiting the BB Tunnel Cancer Center. Tickets are just $39 and is your chance to make a difference. Show your support by purchasing or gifting tickets today. For more information, visit RehobothJazz.com. I'm Mark Stevens from Hartley, Delaware, and I utilize the USDA's Wetland Reserve Easement Program to improve wildlife habitat for deer, waterfowl, and other wildlife while improving water quality. If you have at least 10 acres of woods or wet, unproductive cropland, you may be eligible for compensation to restore and protect the wetlands on your property. To learn more about the Wetland Reserve Easement Program, contact your local USDA Service Center. Take your favorite radio station with you wherever you go. Download free today. We've been riding high on all this wonderful, dry, perfect recreational weather, but from a climatological standpoint, we are actually needing a little more rain here. So next week's rain might seem like a bit of a downer, but it's a ne necessary evil, so to speak. But I wouldn't call rain evil, it's just necessary. Our Spicer Brothers camera in Salisbury, looking at 69 degrees by 8 o'clock, then it will dip down to 66 with partly cloudy skies at 10 o'clock. We're currently in the 70s right now. Not a problem. I mean, we're at 74 in Delmar, for example. It's 73 in Millsboro and Milton, Milford, as well as Lewis. It's clear across our neck of the woods, and it's going to stay that way. We're looking actually pretty nice. Now, it's turmoil for the folks in the mid um, mid Mississippi region around the Memphis area as we have the remnants of Franzian continuing to churn and cause problems there and some of the outer bands may throw a little bit of rain our way by next week but not a lot of it most of it's not actually going to go to the north and away from us overnight lows are going to settle into the 60s but we're going to look at the temperature and, and moisture content going up on the rise here now I mentioned the fact that we need some precipitation over the next six to 10 days. Things are going to change for us uh, dramatically because we're going to start getting soaked here along the East Coast compared to what we've been dealing with. Because think about this. We've been uncharacteristically dry throughout a good portion of all of Sussex. But to the south of uh, Salisbury, it's been a little bit more in the way of scattered showers in our neck of the woods. Now, as far as the next five days are concerned, we're looking at no real chance of precipitation until it jumps dramatically. Right here on Tuesday, we jump up to at least a 62% chance of showers on Tuesday. So if you have outdoor plans, you can have them without the rain till you get to Tuesday of next week. Friday by noon, we see the winds coming out of the east northeast with temperatures in the low 70s along the coast, upper 70s inland right around lunchtime. Friday evening, we stay clear from precipitation and limited cloud cover any at all. Saturday, we're looking at the same situation, particularly in the evening time. We'll have temperatures stay, staying in the 60s by the evening hours. And Sunday early in the morning, we're still going to be pretty mild in time for the uh, uh, Hispanic Festival. Uh, we'll start off in the 60s and then we'll progress upwards from there. A quick look at our three-day beach forecast. You'll notice we stay in the 70s Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for Assateague, for example. No threat of rain. Remember, that holds off until Tuesday. Looks like Ocean City will warm to 75 degrees and then hover at 74 for Saturday and for Sunday. 
And finally, in Rehoboth, 75 on Saturday and Sunday with partly an increasing cloud cover as we go into Sunday. When that rain hits, look, it's by midnight Tuesday, we start seeing the cloud cover overtake the region. Then we look at a wave of rain that's going to push its way from the south to the north and really settle down on top of us for Wednesday going into Thursday. Finally, here's a look at your Paul Davis restoration, the home remodel extended forecast. Yeah, we're going to salvage Monday, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, pull out those umbrellas, preferably our umbrellas. At Paul? This Saturday, September 14th, there's going to be a walk to end Alzheimer's in Rehoboth Beach. The event will take place at Grove Park. If participating, it's encouraged that you arrive for registration, which begins at 8 a.m. as the ceremony starts at 9 a.m. Keep an eye and an ear out for me. I'll be the MC at the event. All funds raised through this event further the care, support, and research efforts of the nonprofit organization, the Alzheimer's Association. It's time to get ready for more Sunday night football. It's the Chicago Bears and the Houston Texans. Big game on Sunday. Coverage starts at 7 right here on Coast TV. Del Marva Sports Network from the Wawa Studios. Today marked one of the most anticipated field hockey matchups in the state of Delaware. A rematch of the last three state championship games between Cape Henlopen and Smyrna. The Vikings have the current upper hand as the reigning champs. Cape won the state title with a thrilling one to nothing win at the University of Delaware last year. Grace Wiggins scored the lone goal that day for Cape and earned her team a celebration. This season, the Vikings are off to a state championship start, boasting a 3-0 record and outscoring opponents 11-1 over that span. On the other end, the Smyrna Eagles know what it's like to win at the highest level. Winners of the 2022 state title with a 2-1 win over Cape. Among the returners for a dominant Eagles squad is junior Bree Moffitt. Last year as a sophomore, the midfielder notched a team-high 34 goals, along with 17 assists, which was the second most for Smyrna. In a small sample size, it's been a surprisingly up-and-down start for the Eagles, coming in with a 1-1 record after a win over Archmere and a loss to Sussex Academy. We'll have highlights from this matchup tonight on the final score at 11 p.m. That'll do it for sports. Have a great night, everyone. As I get older, I was getting a little off balance. Got the uh, recommendations for baths by Bicer Brothers. I love my shower. It's, it's perfect for me. My favorite part was probably how quick and easy it was. They came in the morning and they were done by afternoon. I definitely wanted the grab bars. They also put the seat in, which was very nice. The wand is good, especially if you're sitting. So much safer to get in and out of now. It seems like my showers are quicker that way. So it's perfect. This morning's weather forecast, courtesy of Baths by Spicer Brothers, a Del Marva tradition for over 20 years. You've probably heard by now that all Delawareans can attend Delaware Tech for free through the expanded SEED scholarship program. So I can use SEED to pursue my nursing degree? Yes, you can. What if I want to be a teacher? Let me check on that. Yes. So you're saying I can finally get my degree in juggling? We don't offer that. And that's not a thing. Can I get a certificate in heavy machinery operation? Yep. SEED's not just for recent graduates anymore. Visit our website for more information and eligibility requirements. Feel the rush of adventure and the thrill of incredible savings at Gateway Subaru. Save up to $2,700 on a new 2025 Subaru Outback with financing rates as low as 1.9% for 48 months. Or save up to $2,400 off a new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek with financing rates as low as 1.9% for 48 months. And be among the first to drive the all-new 2025 Subaru Forester. Stop in and reserve yours today. Gateway Subaru, just minutes from the beaches in the heart of Delmarva. Higher standards. My patients mean the world to me. It's why I come to work every day. When a patient gives me a hug or says, I can't believe you were able to do this for me. Getting somebody out of pain. Seeing a patient be able to smile when they haven't for years. Somebody that's afraid and then they're not afraid anymore. I love making a difference in other people's lives for the better. I think that's a really amazing thing that you can do for somebody else. I'm thankful that I get to do it. Open six days a week with convenient hours. Call and schedule your appointment today. Rural communities are on the front lines of a changing climate. Farmers can implement climate smart practices that improve soil health, nutrient management, and energy efficiency. These practices improve our profitability, resiliency, and help to open new markets. We know voluntary conservation works and are committed to working with farmers and forest landowners to leverage resources to increase climate resiliency through conservation practices. To learn more about climate smart practices, scan this QR code to find your local USDA service center. 
Celebrate the season with the four best days of fall at Sunfest. Experience the ultimate celebration of food, drinks, arts, crafts, and entertainment along the boards from October 24th to the 27th. Embrace fall by enjoying a seaside tractor ride, chilling around a beach bonfire, navigating a corn maze, or participating in a pet and bicycle event. Shop around over 200 arts and crafts vendors. Immerse yourself in music with an incredible lineup of free musical performances. Enjoy the free family fun all day. For more information, visit ococean.com slash sunfest. WRDE First Alert Weather, brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. All right, so in Ocean City, we're clear. Temperature of 73 degrees, dew point of 65. Now, don't be surprised if you run into a little fog late tonight. I'm telling you right now, so don't go... <gasps> What happened? I just told you, okay? And we'll look for temperature to settle into the six. Yeah, the cloud cover is increasing as we progress throughout the night. That moisture content is going to become a little bit thicker for us, and we'll have a cloud on the ground. That's what actually fog technically is. By the way, keep up with your forecast by calling our weather line at 443-880-9100. Sponsored by the law offices of Baird, Mandalas, Broxted, and Federico. And here's a look at your Paul Davis Restoration Home Remodeling exclusive 10-day forecast. We're dry for now. We've been dry for a while, so it's time for the rain to check in by next Tuesday. Paul, thank you, and thanks for joining us here for Coast TV News at 6. For more news, more local weather, download our Coast TV News app. The NBC Nightly News is up next. And we're going to see you later tonight for Coast TV News at 11. Have a great evening.